Rudy Giuliani achieved true national and international fame in the aftermath of 9-11. But before he became, quote unquote, America's mayor, ridiculous term, and then a failed presidential candidate and a buck raker going around the world getting paid for God knows what, he was Rudy Giuliani, the self-styled crime fighter, a tough on crime, a law and order guy from Brooklyn who made his big splash as a swaggering, press hungry, sanctimonious, imperious U.S. attorney for the Southern District. He used that office to launch a successful campaign for mayor on a law and order platform with cops rallying to his side. The man who was going to bring order to a lawless city cracked down on the thugs and the criminals and the guys that tried to clean your car windows. Never mind how many people ended up harassed or roughed up by the police or shot by them or how much the city's jails swelled. And through it all, Giuliani sold this worldview, always shot through with racist ideas about crime and violence, that it all came down to good guys and to bad guys. And he was the good guy, and the criminals were the bad guys, and he was the one protecting you from them. The U.S. attorney said he'd like to throw the book at them and anybody else involved in an insider trading scheme. Maybe we can't catch all of them, but we sure as heck can deliver a message, which is if you do get caught, you are going to lose your liberty. You're going to go to prison. I do think that the work in my office and other parts of the Justice Department has changed the definition of the problem of crime in America. Nothing disturbs me more than to see all of the revelations of crime committed by some of the most powerful and some of the wealthiest members of our society. Former prosecutor Rudolph Giuliani won his second race against David Dinkins for mayor of New York City. In the area of crime, uh, the city of New York really has had a great deal of success. City-wide arrests have gone up to record highs, which is one of the ways in which we've also brought down crime. We arrest a lot of people, particularly drug dealers. You've got to pay attention to somebody urinating on the street. It may be a minor thing. It may be a serious thing. People are riding the subways again, and they're walking in the park. In fact, New York is so safe, I'd like to take this moment to officially announce that it is once again all right to hitchhike. <laughs> So what kind of mayor has he been? Good mayor, awful man. That's simple. Now this guy, this guy whose entire life and career about going after crooks, right? This guy finds himself on the wrong side of search warrants, staring down the barrel of an indictment by his former office. It's just an incredible plot twist. As a columnist of the New York Daily News, staff writer for New York Magazine, Michael Daly chronicled decades of nefarious incidents in the checkered political career of Rudy Giuliani, Giuliani even once referred to Daly as public enemy number one. And Michael Daly, now a special correspondent for the Daily Beast, he joins me now. Michael, I thought of you yesterday when I saw this news. What is Michael Daly thinking right now, having reported on this guy and watched his rise, and particularly the kind of sanctimony he brought to it and the bullying and imperiousness about him being the good guy? What, what goes through your mind as you watch the news unroll that he is apartments being raided by the FBI. I can tell you from personal experience, he does not take well to being caught at things. Um, I once had, I had nothing to do one day. I happened to be driving. I almost never drive. I had a car. I'm going past city hall. And who do I see? But Rudy and his entourage coming out of city hall. And he had just announced a crackdown on speeding. So I said, I got nothing else to do. Let me follow him. And I clocked him going 30 miles an hour over the speed limit, passing a loaded school bus on the right in the battery tunnel. And uh, when I wrote that, they went nuts. They said I was a liar. There's no way it happened, but they have counter surveillance. I couldn't have been there. And I said, well, I had an easy pass. You had an easy pass. And it'll show you that I was one second behind you. And all of a sudden, you'd think you would go quiet. But he had press conferences for three days. Oh. At one point, he said the car wouldn't go that fast. And General Motors got nuts and flew in a the team. They were going to say that it did go that fast. And at one point, I'm told, Rudy just said, if this can happen, this is no longer America. So that was a little thing about speeding. You can imagine what's going to happen here. And, you know, Michael Cohen says that Rudy's dumb. He's not at all dumb. He's just nuts. And um, he just is. I mean, this is a guy, he used to scream about parole, the evils of parole. And it turns out that he was conceived when his father was on parole for armed robbery. And Rudy wouldn't exist if it weren't for parole. I mean, it's, you just, you just, everything you learn about him, you just like, I mean, I can remember one day they called us and they said, the mayor's going to have, this is when he's married and he's supposedly living with his wife. The mayor's going to meet his girlfriend for dinner. They called all the papers, everybody, you know, watch Rudy have dinner with his girlfriend and he walked her home and then he's walking back to 
Gracie Mansion. I had nothing else to do, so I figured I'd just walk behind them. And then they happened. There's a little Protestant church on a side street on the way to Gracie Mansion. There was a couple sitting on a bench, and they were necking. And Rudy stopped, and he turned to his aide and said, that's disgusting. So <laughs> it, it just it goes on and well, on and on. Well, I mean, when, when and, you know, I would bet to this day, I'd bet money to this day. Rudy does not know why crime went down in New York. He thinks there's something to do with broken windows, squeegee men. There are only like 12 of them, right? Right. Brian went down in New York because a fat transit cop named Jack Maple instituted a system whereby crime, black on black crime, was treated as seriously as black on white crime. In other words, if you got robbed on Junior Street in Brooklyn, it got treated as seriously as if you were robbed on Central Park South. And that changed the whole city. That's mm. why crime went down. I think Rudy to this day doesn't know that. He, he said this, and this is sort of classic Rudy sanctimony um, uh, on his, his radio show today, which I imagine his lawyers were thrilled that he went ahead and did. I've done your job longer and much better than you have. You people have any convictions like I had when I was U.S. attorney? You haven't had a person like me in the U.S. attorney's office since I left. No wonder you're jealous. I mean, that, but that, that's that's that ego, that perspective is to your point. People say, what happened to Rudy? That's that's been the guy for 40 years. I mean, I, September 10th, 2001, I was by City Hall and I watched Rudy come down the steps with his entourage, right? Not a single person said hello. No one even noticed him. The tourists didn't take his picture. It was over. The parade had gone past. Everybody was tired of him. All his antics, all the stuff with his personal his girlfriends and his lies and his craziness. It was done. It was over. Next morning was a very bad morning, as everybody knows. And then like two days later, I'm down there and I get a call from the city that's saying, we want you to write about Rudy Giuliani. I said, why? And they said, well, he's like the face of 9-11. I said, what are you talking about? I haven't even seen him down here. Hmm. And they said, oh, no, no, he's the, he's, he's the face of it. Well, it turned out he was on the TV camera the whole time. And everybody decided this is uh, Mr. New York. I mean, the reason he was walking around down there with, you know, that famous footage of him walking yeah. with his people with the mask. The reason he was there was that he built the world's only aerial bunker on the 17th floor of number seven World Trade Center with diesel fuel tanks above it. Right. And it was burning. He couldn't go to his command right. center. He had to go to ladder five up in uh, Greenwich Village and break into there to make his command post while those guys were all downtown getting killed. Michael Daly, who did an incredible job chronicling uh, Mayor Giuliani and 9-11 and the days afterwards. It's always such a pleasure to talk to you, Michael. Thank you. I talk too much when I get on that. No, you're Thanks. good. You're great. Just keep talking. <laughs> all right. Talk to you soon. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.